Unpossessed Possessions by Alexander McLaren And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. 1 Kings 22, verse 3 What is ours and not ours? Every Christian man has large tracts of unannexed territory, unattained possibilities, unenjoyed blessings, things that are his and yet not his. How much more of God you and I have a right to than we have the possession of? The ocean is ours, but only the little pailful that we carry away home to our own houses is of use to us. The whole of God is mine if I am Christ. And a dribble of God is all that comes into the lives of most of us. How much inward peace is ours? It is meant that there should never pass across a Christian soul more than a ripple of agitation, which may indeed ruffle and curl the surface. But deep down, there should be the tranquility of the fathomless ocean, unbroken by any tempest, and yet not stagnant because there is a vital current that runs through it, and every drop is being drawn upward to the surface and the sunlight. There may be a peace in our hearts deep as life, a tranquility which may be superficially disturbed, but is never thoroughly, and down to the depths broken. And yet let some little petty annoyance come into my daily life, and what a pucker I am in. Then we forget all about the still depths that we ought to be living in, and fears and hopes and loves and ambitions disturb our souls, just as they do the spirits of the men that do not profess to have any hold fast in God. The peace of God is ours, but ah, in how sad a sense it is true that the peace of God is not ours. What heights? For Ramoth means high places. What heights of consecration there are, which are ours according to the divine purpose and according to the fullness of God's gift. It is meant, and it is possible, and well within the reach of every Christian soul, that he or she should live day by day in the continual and utter surrender of himself or herself to the will of God, and should say, I do the little I can do, and I leave the rest with thee. And should say again, All is right that seems most wrong, if it be his sweet will. But instead of this absolute submission, and completeness and joyfulness of surrender of ourselves to him, what do we find? Reluctance to obey. Regret at providences self-dominant or struggling hard against the partial domination of the will of God in our hearts. The mind which was in Jesus Christ, who was able to say, It is written of me, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Lord, is ours by virtue of our being Christians. But alas, in practical realization, how sadly it is not ours. What noble possibilities of service, what power in the world are bestowed on Christ's people. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, says he. And he breathed on them and said, As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. The divine gift to the Christian community and to the individuals that compose it, for there are no gifts given to the community but to the individuals that make it up, is a fullness of power for all their work. And yet look how all through the ages, the church has been beaten by the corruption of the world, and who today many of us are standing, either utterly careless and callous about the things that we have the medicine to cure, or in desperation, 
looking about for other healing for the social and moral condition of the community than that which is granted to us in Jesus Christ. Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and taken not out of the hands of the king of Syria. There is ever so much in the world which belongs to our master, and therefore belongs to us, and which the church is bound to lay its hand upon and claim for its own and for its lords. For remember, brethren, that all things at which I have been glancing, and I might have largely increased the catalog, all these things, spiritual endowments of peace and safety and purity and joy, of religious elevation and consecration, and power for service and the like, are ours by a threefold title and charter. God's purpose, which is nothing less for every one of us than that we should be filled with all the fullness of God, and that He should supply all our need according to His riches and glory. That is the first of the parchments on which our title depends. And the second title deed is Christ's purchase for the efficacy of His death and the power of his triumphant life have secured for all that trust him the whole fullness of this divine gift. And the third of our claims and titles is the influence of that Holy Spirit that Jesus Christ gives to every one of his children to dwell in him. There is in you, working in you, if you have any faith in that Lord, a power that is capable of making you perfectly pure, perfectly blessed, strong with an immortal strength, and glad with a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory.